Scaro! Everyone, welcome to Radio Free Scarrow, episode number eight hundred and forty-eight. I am Stephen Edmonton, born of Vancouver, and Chris Edmonton. It's uh, it's amazing. We get to review a new episode of TV's Doctor Who today. This is uh, cherish this moment, um, Warren and Chris, because we get one more this year, one more this year, and then one more thirteen months after that. Ugh, ridiculous. Make more Doctor Who. Come yep. on, hurry up. The uh, the episode in question is Legend of the Sea Devils, the the Easter special. Uh, well, the 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 episode that aired at Easter in 2022. Mm -hmm. um, well, it says Easter like lizards. <laughs> Sub -aqu you know, aquatic lizards. Uh, I tell you what, flies in boiler suits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that definitely says Easter to me. To quote our uh, literal, I don't know what computers. your family celebrations yeah. are like, but. Um, I don't know. I don't know where this uh, where this one stands in regards to uh, the planet of the dead, but uh, we will give our better. <laughs> we'll give our <laughs> we'll give our thoughts and and comments on this here Doctor Who episode. Now, I you know it's been like four months, and I go first. I think I went first with Eve of the Daleks. I remember that, and I quite like that one. Um, look how eager we are to be first to talk about this. <laughs> so I'm gonna. I'm going to, th you know Pick what, somebody. I'm going to throw it to Chris. I'm going to go to Chris first. What did, what were your initial thoughts on Legend of the Sea Devils? <laughs> um, it was fine. Sure. Certainly, certainly, not, <laughs> certainly nothing outstanding. I've, no. You know, we've had worse. We've had better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that about, that about tracks. Warren, your, <laughs> your thoughts? Uh, yeah, it was somewhat slight. It wasn't, you mentioned Planet of the Dead. It wasn't Planet of the Dead slight. There wasn't no. anything I really hated in it, but it didn't really jump out at me and ya-cha-cha in my face either. Like it was, it was okay. Um, it's past the time reasonably, I guess is the best way to put it. <laughs> yeah. With <laughs> it, a couple it, bits and pieces here and there that I'll point out later. It filled that 47 minute gap in your heart. It did. Yeah. Uh, the thing, well, here's the funny thing is that I don't think it was originally 47 minutes. I, I heard a few weeks ago that they were excising stuff from this episode. And then I saw that a similar rumor from someone else today. Um, and so now sort of knowing that, I don't know what was taken out. Um, but I think something was taken out because it probably was 60 minutes and now it was 47 minutes. And mm -hmm. if, if I might, if I might use a, a Led Zeppelin analogy. Bear with me on this. <laughs> what one. a surprise. Uh, there is a bootleg from 1969 of a Led Zeppelin playing a gig. Remember, this is the early days for the band, so they don't have the big entourage and tech crew and everything else. And uh, during a performance of the song As Long As I Have You, which was not on any albums, but it was a song they played a lot during the uh, early days of the band, uh, John Paul Jones' bass amp starts making noises. You can hear it on the bootleg. It's really great. And then it just completely blows, and there's just fart noise for like... <laughs> through. But the band keeps playing, and uh, Jimmy Page has to put his guitar down, and he and John Paul Jones are trying to figure out what's going on at the bass at. Meanwhile, John Bonham on the drums is still playing and Robert Plant is sort of playing a tambourine and just improvising something until they can get the thing back together and get it back up and running. And that is Legend of the Sea Devils to me. It's basically everything <laughs> is falling apart. There is like an idea of a story here. They've had to remove a bunch of it. They've basically It's basically left over from Doctor Who Flux. And they've managed to cobble it together for a 47 minute episode of Doctor Who uh, to be thrown out there on Easter just to sort of keep the, uh, you know, keep <laughs> the intellectual property of Doctor Who going for another six months until it's time to have a new episode. <laughs> To of fulfill your, a contractual commitment, feels of all like your that. Led Zeppelin comparisons. This is certainly one of them. I got to tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. It just, uh, it, it, I don't know that you. Uh, so, in 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 the story where the doctor says there's no plan and she'll come up with some great improvisation, 
That's, meta. Well, um, to very be meta. fair, when has the doctor not done that? You can't really peg that one on this <laughs> I know, particular episode. No. Like, but I, I loved. I mean, I, uh, I love to know so much about behind the scenes of, of the most recent years because COVID wrecked everything. Yeah. You know, the, the doctor the editing. <sighs> the editing is quite choppy, and especially really the action choppy. parts. You're like, mm, you, yeah, that's usable, but it not doesn't flow at all. Yeah, they're well, not. Cl- clearly, we needed a Doctor Who confidential for. <laughs> 60, 60 minutes to tell us how they got the swords to change from blue lights to orange lights. That, that's true. They went to that. After effects. Uh, or LEDs. I, yeah, I, I, I agree, Warren. I think the editing was not there mm-hmm. to improve the pace. It was there to hide something that wasn't there. And I don't know what that something yeah. is. Uh, this seems to be a hallmark with uh, modern Doctor Who stories and episodes set on boats. Characters go missing with no reason explained at all. Um, uh TV writer and listener Tom DeVille <clears throat> pointed out, he, first off, he said, well, I'm eating an edible and I'm going to see if this makes it any better. <laughs> and then he said later, oh, so the guy is going to sacrifice himself. Hey, it's Chibno Bigno, bingo. And I'm like, he's kind of got a point there. Yeah, it does kind of. Wow. Well, uh, who else? It's not like they're going to let the doctor stay there and no, you know, hold, but this hold is, down the hap This has happened more than once. And I'm sure there's plenty of Moffat and uh, well, RTD course. bingos the, you can this, point this to is, as well. But yeah. This is why you create characters that can become expendable. Mm-hmm. I suppose so. And you can kind of tell who's going to be the expendable one. Like, you know, the guy, oh, yeah. the guy who comes 300 years into the future yeah. for some reason. Um, it, it, I mean, COVID might have been the reason for a lot of this. The fact that, you know, Madame Ching is there on a ship with no crew. It's like... There's no way that, that a ship that size would get to where it is. I don't think that's with, physically possible no that anyone crew. could do that. Even the greatest pirate uh, queen of all time. I don't think she's able to single-handedly pilot a boat or anybody could no. for that matter. No. Um, they tried to go for a sw- swashbuckling adventure, but they had like three cast members. And it was just like, yeah. it's kind of an homage to classic Doctor Who yeah. in a way. Yeah. But even then, the smugglers had more people than that in 1966. I mean, to be fair, I watched Warriors of the Deep before this, and it's better. <laughs> so, but also Warriors of Deep is a lot of running around too. Most classic Doctor Who is a lot of running around. Mm-hmm. We expect a little more in our year of our Lord 2022, but you know. We do. I, I, there's yeah, a lot of people I, I saw watching Sea Devils, especially, and or um, Warriors and of or the Deep. Other, yeah. other stuff. Yeah. Like Warriors of the Deep yeah. uh, as, a, as a precursor to this. And thankfully it's none of that was needed. Um, <laughs> no, because yeah, no, Although, which is fine. Because well, I mean, at the, at, anyway, right? at the so. end of the day, the sea, the sea devils, obviously, the doctor is like, okay, so I saw, I met you in the future. You were noble, or whatever phrasing she used. Like she talked about how the sea devils were, but really, these are so way out there compared to what we saw in 1972 that that doesn't even matter. No, I, I saw... I, I'd just like to say... Uh, sorry, go, no, go ahead. go ahead, Warren. Go ahead. I was going to say, my boys got done dirty. And I don't even know if they're boys, <laughs> to be honest. They could be, they could be girls for all right. I know, or some aquatic, uh, some amphibian version. Uh-huh. Uh, but anyway, they got done dirty <clears throat> because uh, they, they show up, they're, they're kind of cool, and then they just kind of get flummoxed in one sword wipe. And I'm like, well, come on, really? Then there were a lot more sea devils than and... just, just the 10 that, uh, or however many, that uh, Dan and the other guy, whose name escapes me, um, t- went up against. Right. And then and the other... All... And also Sorry, the the unnecessary murder. True. Uh, although on the other hand, I, I will I will was... know, defend it, but but got to remember this guy's from fifteen something when that was kind of what you did. Like yeah, that was kind of <laughs> the management style at the time. And then there's the weird bit where Dan like takes a sword and kills five of them in one fell swoop. It's... That's what I mean. Like yeah. they just kind of and that just that's <laughs> kind of the end of the sea devil threat. And I'm like Whoa, seven seven okay, one sure. blue Mickey Mouse style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Sea Devils came and went. Uh, uh, a friend of ours uh, watched this not knowing who the Sea Devils were and left not knowing who the Sea Devils were. <laughs> they didn't, you know, honestly, like if if we know what they look, I mean, we've been looking forward to this since we saw their 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 mugs on the uh, next time trailer at the end of Eve of the Daleks. And uh, do we, you know, maybe we know what's going on in them, but like to someone new to the show, it's like. Did you actually explain who they are? Like, you, obviously the doctor knew who they were and that she met them in the future. But, you know, there's nothing beyond that. It's just these weird guys no. that look like turtles and swing swords. And it's... Well, she makes mention that they were, you know, they predate humans and all yeah. that kind of stuff as well. So. And then, right. yes, yeah, says, that's bad. I'm like, is it though? They were here before us. <laughs> so yeah. They yeah. kind of, you know, I mean, it, it, the age old argument there. But uh, at the end of the day, is that any more or less than we saw with Pertwee's Sea Devil story? 
Um, I don't remember. No, yeah. well, so it's about I'm, on par. I feel like they had a little more room to build up to it. Um, modern Doctor <laughs> six episodes to build. Uh, up. I know Modern Doctor yeah. Who being Modern <laughs> Doctor Who. There had to be this for some reason. One of them's frozen. And I still haven't figured out why. Uh, no, that doesn't really track. Why, well, why he was a statue? Why he was a statue? For because he it was said in the story. Okay, go on. So the um the first mate or whatever of. Oh, what the heck is the guy's name? Uh, I think I put it in my notes The 1533 somewhere. ship, the old ship? The <sighs> 1533 ship, Guy yes. Just, right, uh, the guy who's G- the... Ji-hun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so the first mate or whatever was given the orange pendant, the... the, the um, the, 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 the What do they call it? The keystone. The keystone. keystone, keystone yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he was given the keystone to take to safety when he jumped overboard, mm-hmm. and he made it to land. Right. And... Uh, a sea devil followed him. That sea devil followed him to land, ah. and the power of the keystone turned him into the statue. Oh, uh, okay. wow! Why this? Why the statue was of a ginormous <laughs> sea devil <laughs> holding relative up. to the size of a human, holding a human by the throat or whatever. Yeah, that's a little more Pageantry. than is covered. Yeah, but the basic because that's one thing I wrote in my notes is like, um, why was the sea devil in the statue? How long was he there? And so, yeah, because he followed the crewmate to to land and got got <laughs> got frozen, got, got done wrong by the, the keystone, like like a common milker or something in the garden and Trocken yeah. or something like that, <laughs> it's uh, a something like that. Obviously, so, I mean, it, by it, the way, it was, this whole it was explained because at the outset, cause that was that was one of the things one of the things I didn't like about the story was the the, the storytelling. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's just presented as fact, yeah, with. A nominal explanation later, which may or may not be sufficient mm-hmm. for what was originally presented. Cut, also, yeah. Merca erasure. No Merca's to be found yeah, in this. Well, All you have to give me was one line where they said, whatever that thing is, a giant why, you know, why, Moby Dick why looking thing. Why couldn't the goober fish be uh, yeah, just, a Merca? Just, yeah. Don't know. It doesn't have to be a Merca. Just say, oh, cousin of the Merca. Just, I mean, okay, this is me begging to be pandered to when I rail against Star Trek doing this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then still eat it up. <laughs> but... But yeah, just give me an offhand line about, oh, cousin of the Merca. What's that? Never mind. We're too busy. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Go on to the next thing. Or is that a Merca? They, or... did <laughs> they did it in God Complex for the for the Nymon. Yeah. Some offhand it's... half Come remark. On, yeah. well, to me. I, I, I would. I say wearing my, my Nymon shirt. <laughs> yeah, I would have been more uh, more satisfied had they actually, you know, because the, the beast sort of like just shows up, you know, mm-hmm. uh, kills a farmer, uh, a, it's... a fisherman rather. Yeah. And... Then sort of bites the TARDIS, and then that's the last we see of it. What happens to it after that? Well, it attacks the boat, but then it kind of just takes off, and who knows where it goes. Yeah. It's, mm. it's, um, it, as we, as I scroll back in the live chat a little bit, so our, our friend Jake Simpson makes a very good point of this is less a story, more a collection of events. And that's, yeah. that's really how it feels. Yeah. It's all these, it's all these, these touchstones. But the the linking narration is super weak. Yeah, from from what I gather, this is a. I mean, Chibnall himself sort of said this was an idea that they had sort of hit the original season thirteen series thirteen for Flux. They couldn't really make it work for Flux uh, like they did maybe Village of the Angels, which they sort of worked into the format a little bit. So it was kind of a leftover mm-hmm. story. Um, yeah, it shows. Uh, and I I think this is my my reasoning is that when the BBC sort of said, hey. Um, can you do one more episode other than the ones that you're doing right now? Because we would like you to do something in for the BBC Centenary in October. And my guess, my reasoning is the episode that was uh, that aired today probably originally would have been the last episode of Jodie Whittaker. And I feel like that was punted to October to be the big special. And then this. So does that mean some of the chunks that got cut out of this one might they have been? Relative to regeneration and, and no, you know, no, I th- I think Danny Ma of her character. I I could be wrong about this, but I think this came on as an afterthought. I think I think the finale was sort of planned already, and then oh, we have another episode. Well, wait a minute, we could maybe uh, use that sea that uh, that China Sea one episode, and maybe we put the Sea Devils in it. Maybe we can put that together. I think it sort of came out of a necessity of needing to fill another week 
Kind mm-hmm. of like Led Zeppelin needed to fill time while they got their <laughs> yes. bass amp kind of like running, that. Not at all. Uh, to put an episode out, and that's that is what I think happened. I don't know if that's at all true, but this is this is the time of COVID, and it's the time of Chibnall, and it's a lot of speculation as to what might have happened that mm. where things didn't quite go to plan. Because we watched an episode where things quite didn't go to plan. I think today. I wonder what the October one's gonna be like COVID wise like because it's been made by now but also made during COVID but things were a little better at that point of COVID I think yeah like back, of, like vaccines yeah. and stuff like that but uh well and just production like had kind of people had learned how to work around it to a point in production yeah um, yeah so I mean there's uh you can you can it's very tough sometimes to know when things were recorded because you know, they've done in studio and doors. Mm-hmm. Information's not necessarily readily available, things like that. But um, as an example, this past week was the first episode of the new series of Taskmaster, um, which I know you guys don't watch, probably never You're even right. have heard of. Oh, I, I know of it. I know of it. But okay. uh, I know you're a fan. Fantastic, fantastic British yeah. uh, game show ish. Quiz yeah. show, uh, right? Not really a quiz no, show. No, not, not a quiz, quiz show. show. No. Anyway. Uh, anyway. So this is the 13th series for the 11th and 12th, at the very least, maybe the 10th. I can't quite remember. Um, so there's this, uh, a studio segment where uh, all the people are in chairs. And the, the chairs were, for at least the 11th and 12th series, were, were socially distanced right. a good couple of meters apart. Mm-hmm. This 13th series, which was shot at whatever point, everyone's back to how it used to be pre-COVID where they're like a couple inches apart. Right. Mm-hmm. So they're probably so, vaccinated, one would think. Well, over yeah. and above that, just like the, the production uh, regulations, allowances, whatever of British TV have uh, obviously okay. yeah, changed, changed. Yeah. changed, changed back, reverted, uh, whatever, mm-hmm. to whatever degree to allow things like that to happen without, without penalty. Like maybe... Gone are the days of the closing credits having their, their COVID wrangler. Kind oh, of I know. Yeah. COVID compliance officers. Yeah. 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 Although cases are rising like crazy in the UK. So we'll see about that. <laughs> yeah, they, they were. They've descended this as we record this. Yeah. But I mean, who knows what's happening. Yeah. Long term. <sighs> yeah. So we're all pretty middling on this one. Uh, um, I mean, there's, yeah, there's some stuff I didn't like and there's some stuff I did like. The Thasma stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, why don't we just talk about that? that. Yeah. Yeah. But I think they handled it. They handled it well, and I'm still disappointed because I didn't get what I wanted, basically, right? So, so like, I actually swore, and I'm not going to say what because it's Easter, but I did take the name of a certain deity in vain <laughs> when when Thasmin came, or not Thasmin, sorry, oh, yes, yes, yeah, so close to kissing her, and I was like, God damn it! You, you right. guess what I said because <laughs> it didn't happen. Uh, and then afterwards, she friend zoned uh, Yes, but. On the other hand, this is what the doctor's not wrong. She's she said this in much more uh, harsh terms as Matt Smith saying, "I'm going to have to bury you one day," you know, or you know, yeah. or David Tennant I saying don't... essentially the same thing. She said that in a nicer way, but she basically said that. And I don't think she friend zoned her. No, I, no, she's. I, I no, I don't she said, think so I at all. I want this to last forever. Yeah. too. So I mean. Yeah, but she also said, "Let's let's you know, let's live in the moment," kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I said, it's present. handled a lot, a lot. Not better is not the right term because it was a different situation with those other doctors, kind of. Because I the 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 benchmark I've kind of used across <laughs> across any anything like this has been school reunion, where the doctor and Rose are having their conversation, and the doctor says to Rose, "You know, you can spend your whole life with me, but I can't spend my whole life mm-hmm. with you." Yeah, yeah. And Let me that's, qualify this. That's the kind of that's the kind of thing that's going through you know, the doctor's mind as, as she's wrestling with her feelings for Yaz. Mm -hmm. Now, let me qualify this. I am not queer. I don't know how queer relationships work and I'm never gonna, you know, other than secondhand. So I'm probably saying something wrong here. So please, somebody who is queer, correct me first of all, and give me your opinion second, please. Because, because I'm just guessing on this. Right. I, I, I appreciated that it was sort of like a mature conversation about it. I think it was yeah. kind of like, you know, towards the end of the 10 rows bit, it, it felt very doe-eyed, kind of very like, oh, they're going to, are they, or will they, or won't they? And I feel like this kind of wanted to have it both ways, but sort of like, you know, as you say, the doctor was right. I mean, you know, she's going to age 50 years in, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and look pretty much the same while Yaz is going to be close to death sadly because of humans or she's going to regenerate in october and she might turn into 
a dude or who knows something right. Yaz doesn't like something something that Yaz doesn't know uh yeah. <laughs> just like we saw in Curse of Fatal Death yeah um but I, I you know I do like that they sort of dealt with it they did sort of string it they did string it along but yes. they also dealt with it you know what I mean in, mm-hmm. at, at least yeah. at least insofar as the doctor addresses things which yeah. she has not <laughs> she has not, not a, done it's not a Martha no. situation where it's this, just kind of like oh her feelings just get blown off yeah yeah I mean, she. Yeah, that's. Yeah, she likes how things are going. I mean, believe me, as a uh, as an awkward teenager, uh, you know, who was very much a friend of of girls my age in high school and stuff, but not anything more than that. And I think there were times when I sort of think, you know what, I don't actually have a crush on them. I just want to be friends with them like this forever. But knowing that they're probably going to want to go off and find boyfriends, you know, or something like that, and thus I will be punted to the side. So in a way, I was kind of seeing like that. I wish that we could just be this close and be friends and have it be forever and have nothing change and therefore nothing change. And that's kind of what I took from the conversation that the doctor okay. and Yaz were having, you know, because yeah, the so doctor I, is kind of that adolescent, like I'm, the emotions are weird and strange and I don't know. 2000 year old you know, adolescent, yeah. That too, well, yeah. She, she says, she says, why don't you always think of me as a kid, basically, yeah. in, the, in the episode. Yeah. Um, I see, I, I still took a, a different, uh, took a different outcome from that, that, that yes, a romantic thing could be on the table, should be, will be on the table. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just, you know, don't let it get too deep. Don't expect too much from it necessarily. Oh God, no. With every, I mean, we'll talk about what's in the next time trailer, but with everything that's crammed mm-hmm. into the next episode, yeah. where are they going to find well, time? Just to give the first second of the trailer, she says, I want this to last forever. And the next thing she says, and when, when it goes next time is nothing lasts nothing forever. Lasts forever. Yeah. Well, well yeah. okay. That is quite the whiplash I just got out yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, I, I like those bits and I, I was kind of hoping they'd be, uh, coming in the episode. And when that sort of thread started finally piled up, which, which is kind of weird because they kind of, all of a sudden they just cut to Dan and saying, yep, I'm following this guy I just met and we're going to swim out to sea and board this boat and avenge this guy's dad's death. And that's what, just what we're going to do. Even though the doctor told me to stay put, basically he is <laughs> removing himself from the plot so that the doctor and Yaz can have a conversation about their relationship. It felt very and that seemed, unsubtle. That seemed but. COVID related too. Cause it's like, I told him not to wander off. I'm like, when did that happen? I've seen it twice and I don't remember that actually happening. <laughs> yeah. So I oh, think that was oh, kind yeah. of papered over. Mm-hmm. And, and Dan's hesitation to wander off. He's like, well, I was told not to wander off. Like he was an eight year old. Yeah. Um, Although I did like how the guy goes, oh, so you must be 70, right? <laughs> and he kind of fudges his actual age. 40, 42. 42. 42. Yeah. <laughs> like spack off. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed the as I mean because we were all expecting that and wanting to see yeah. more of that. And they did do something with it at least. They did, yeah. They didn't sort of just string it along too much. So I liked that. I liked the way the sea devils looked. I you know just their. I like the animatronics on the hero sea devil. Yeah, like, is it, was, was it animatronics well done, or was it CG? I don't know. Uh, I don't. No, that was animatronics. There's a lot of like sort of slight movement. I mean, oh, I could be wrong about this, yeah. but but it looked to me like that was an anim because they, they're going to make one hero head that does all that stuff, and right. then the rest of them just kind of sit there and are like the background guys, right? But right. But yeah, it looked to me like, because it looked not subtle, not subtle is not the right word, because CG sometimes isn't, but mm-hmm. it looked it looked mechanical, I guess, is the way to, in a good way, is what I'm trying to say. Or is CG advancing to this, the point where they want to make it look mechanical? Like uh, It is on a Marvel movie. This is not a Marvel movie. Because, <laughs> so. you know, the CG, not yet. I mean, there is CG on Baby Yoda, for instance, but, you know, it's only to yeah, accent again, what the actual puppet $10 is. $10 million dollars per episode. Yeah. This is nowhere near that. Yeah. Like, and it's about the sea devils, not Baby Yoda. That's true. <laughs> Nobody's going out and get their getting their uh, sea devils lunchboxes. Come on. Uh, if only we had Doctor Who Confidential, we could find out how they actually animated the sea devils. I'm betting yeah. animatronics. It's I, cheaper for one thing, and it looks better, honestly. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, I, I I made notes of actually how how crappy the sea devil outfits were as far as speaking goes. Because the lips barely moved. You could barely tell that they were speaking. Right. They had a freaking Dalek-style light-up pendant around yeah. the sea devil's neck. I kind of like that. It reminded me of the Silurians. Yeah. It did remind me of yeah, the Silurians. The Silurians had their, yeah. their blinking third eye yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Um, but, I mean, it, the, the, it looks good, but... In, practical use i think it was um uh, eh. far less than i mean I, see, I seem to recall them not moving their mouths at all in the old ones at least in warriors of the no team. they were just like they just <laughs> it just sound sort of came out of their 
they didn't even have mouths really in the Sea Devils, did they? I'm trying to remember how they no, moved. They they, well, so they talked so slow that you couldn't tell anyway. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it took half an episode to de- deliver a line. Why did want to hold a line? And then you, you know, you try to put that over the. Uh, Get on with it. I heard people complain about the sound mix again. Uh, that that was another common They're complaint. Right. On uh, yeah, that's wh- that's why I watch Doctor Who and pretty much any TV now with subtitles with on. With subtitles, yeah, yeah. If you can do it, I didn't. I didn't do that for the first viewing, but I definitely did for the second. Yeah. Uh, I caught, a, caught a few things that I definitely did not hear correctly the first time. Oh, there. really? Yeah, no. I only watched this one time. I missed a few things, too. I only watched this one time. Is that a damning indictment as to my enthusiasm? Of you? Yes. Of anybody else? No. Yeah. Maybe. What else uh, What else did we, did we like? I know, Chris, uh, you probably got notes. Well, this but... is not, okay. I was going to say what I did like, but go ahead. What you didn't like or what you did like? What I didn't like. Oh, I feel I feel like our, our lineup for that is going to be a little okay, longer. Well, well, let's yeah, let's <laughs> keep going with stuff we like. Then. Well, if we liked anything, I was uh, I was okay with the Sea Devils having stolen the the fifteen thirty three ship, right? Uh, insofar as insofar as because um, the doctor's like, well, why do you need a ship? And basically, the answer is the flex. Just a <laughs> True, frick yeah. with you. Just a mess with the humans. Look at this it's ship. Just a flex. That's yeah, all it is. <laughs> and I was, so I was I, kind of okay, sorry. fine, whatever. Right. I was kind of hoping they'd have their little disc guns because because why wouldn't they? Like it's just just because this is eighteen whatever doesn't mean they have to have swords. They could gunpowder have gunpowder exists. Yeah. We saw they, cannons. Yeah, they could. Then they could have their like guns from before because presumably they were buried or slept with those in the first place, right? Mm-hmm. They had those from mm-hmm. the before times. So why wouldn't they have now? I mean, it's a, it's a minor stupid point to complain about, but well, I mean, in in. Uh, artificial is the only thing <laughs> yeah. like they have swords because it's a swashbuckling pirate story. yeah it's, yeah it yeah. wouldn't really work that's it would the, break the only the pirate reason story. it's, it's the only reason they have right, swords yeah. it's like yeah, you don't wear forest camo in the desert you use the uh the, the weapons <laughs> that are going to be useful for you in your situation in in that so how does how does that explain guys to go to mcdonald's and in full camo <laughs> jake <laughs> simpson in arizona yeah. why don't you explain this it, one for it, us? <laughs> in that regard i mean i i actually think the sea devils are, are one of the better monsters because they actually adapt to their surroundings uh more and that they are they dress that's fair, you know yeah. they they Salurians just go, I'm naked and you're going to deal with it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Except Madame Ambassador, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, Warren, what we're saying is you desperately needed a Mirka reference and you needed to have the uh, the little round circle guns. Yeah. The very thing that I give you a hard time about, I am just as guilty of. There we go. You need mm-hmm. to be placated. You need direct references. No one mentioned I don't Bulick. I them. I would like Warriors them, the but Deep. I don't need them. Right. What a shame. Uh, also, for some if, reason, if only if only a human being directly interfaced with a computer. <laughs> Where's Maddox? Where's our sync operator? Oh, man. why isn't every single woman in the cast <laughs> slathered in cloud with makeup for no makeup. particularly good why reason? Why didn't anyone try to attempt karate to defeat the big giant sea beast? That's the obvious <laughs> answer. I, I call it the goober fish. Goober fish. I like that. And there's always a bigger yeah. fish. There's always a bigger fish. Was the goober fish the bigger fish, or was the nope. the goober fish was eaten by the bigger fish? Yeah. Okay. R.I.P. Goober fish. Um, <laughs> I went to the length of checking a script for Phantom Menace to see if it was one word or two goober fish, <laughs> and and the result is it's one word. It's one word. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do I call this? I'm George Lucas. Ah, goober fish. Ah, I'm so uh, funny. <laughs> um, there is uh, the sea devil for some reason for the first and only time in the episode when it boards its ship. Uh, just jumps about 50 feet in the air to board the ship. Yeah. <laughs> he does a Hulk, basically. What's the deal with it? It's a master <laughs> in the end of time. I'm thinking, okay. And I, I turned to Erica and I was watching that. I go, they fly now? They fly now. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> But it's also, like a pterodactyl. It's thick like a pterodactyl. They don't actually C's. fly. <laughs> and he uses, his, he uses a fin on his feet to fly, just like the Submariner does in the Marvel comics. Sure. <laughs> he has wings on his feet, Pedants. Calm down. I don't know. I know that. I, I, I know that stupid explanation is even stupider in the comics. But, well, and then they cut... This is why I think there's there must be something that was cut out, because I feel like there was probably somewhere where the Sea, sea Devil went back to his ship, uh, because the, literally he, he jumps over to his ship... Uh, on the other side of the bay and then he's there and the doctor goes oh it's the sea devils and then he's there standing with the sea devils on his ship it's like okay that was a it was a weird cut there was weird cuts but also in- how 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 come he can Thanos with green mist all over the place? Like that doesn't make any sense either. They got like a teleport. They don't explain it. They got like a teleport yeah. system now I guess these cats do um, mm-hmm. with their science with uh, 
which is kind of a, I you know I kind of what I liked about the C, the original Sea Devils and Silurians is that you look at their tech and it's just like weird. They use their third eye to like open doors and stuff. Mm-hmm. But these Sea De- Devils just have big metal handles that chunk down and just like they just walked into any any generic uh, control yeah. center. It's not like the Zygons with their Zygon-y controls. Yeah, it didn't seem very sea devil at all. When you look at their attire yeah. and their swords and everything, and now they just have this precise metal handles to do whatever, to um, flip the earth around, to yeah. make it water. Or MacGuffin the MacGuffin yeah. by MacGuffin again. And then they just sort of disappear. Everyone would just sort of disappeared. It was... It was kind of frustrating this episode. I won't lie. A little bit. Yeah. Chris, you got any? Uh, you got some? Yeah, you're not in there. Live stream. Uh, we're doing this in a live stream again when Chris went, <laughs> like, Chris went like this. That's what he did. Thanks for the yeah. visual on the um, yeah, podcast. Yeah. What, what, uh, what, Helpful. what gripes do you have, Chris? This is, uh, this is going <laughs> um, <laughs> is it? I mean, I've got a f- notes. Uh, f- we, yeah. I've got some notes. Do you want to refer to? I'm sure, I'm sure Warren will be. Uh, itching to chime in uh, here and there as well. Feel free, in, probably. Some but of the I'll wait. I'll more wait negative aspects. Oh, no, whatever. It's all, all good. Right. Um, so I was uh, surprised at the amount of English spoken in 1807 China. I'm not. Uh, I'm let not. alone 1533 China. I, Isn't that the TARDIS? It's the TARDIS. The TARDIS wasn't there. Just let it happen. Just TARDIS let it happen. TARDIS wasn't there at the outset, so uh, no. just just let it. I I think I what, think that's screen convenience. It might have case. been oh, yeah, absolutely. It, it might have been less <laughs> better had they attempted to speak the proper dialect and language or something in those situations I, than just. To I, do I wasn't sure when it happened. Right. I wasn't sure when it happened, so I looked it up. Uh, the British did not control Hong Kong until 1841, so no. it's definitely not that either. No, it's TARDIS stuff. I mean, uh, I, I, I not mark it down to Chernobyl, the uh, the amazing uh, HBO uh, BBC, <laughs> where they just spoke, you know what, we're not going to try and put on like fake Russian accents, we're just going to speak no. in our regular accents, and this is, you know... Or the Death of Stalin does that too, and for five yeah. minutes you're like, what the hell is going on here? And then you're like, oh, this totally just, works just, with them yeah. talking like a bunch of crazy Brits yeah. or Americans or whoever they happen to so be. So I'm... Because like, it doesn't put it on or the fact that every language is british in any movie yeah <laughs> like by americans mm. like clearly if you got a french movie they're just gonna have french people talking yeah. about it. but uh, or whatever but or a chinese movie for that matter but mm-hmm. but americans and brits have oh these are foreigners they're british john luke picard british what they finally explain <laughs> at picard but <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well i mean that's the reason the, the germans are always played by brits as well i guess yeah exactly <laughs> it's just it's just freewheeling evil you, if you need an evil guy here's a brit mm-hmm from um from a storytelling perspective, I was honestly surprised to see the sea devil in the cold open, uh not just the statue, but like you know full on in the flesh mm-hmm. in, in the cold open that uh i I for some reason anticipated that we were gonna get maybe not a different or, or more grand introduction but a later introduction mm-hmm. but nope, there nope. They were right at the right at the bang of the right uh, right at the start, and it's like okay. Cool. If you're going to call it Legend of the Sea Devils, you might as well put a sea devil in there. Who are we? We're not Terry Nation here. We're not. We're Waiting not until the end of episode one. Yeah, yeah, we're not doing that to you. You're gonna. You wanted a sea devil. Here's your sea devil. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Again, I still have no idea why the sea devil was like three times the size of the human. But very was odd. And, the and it's weird how like um like I was I just recently on my daily Doctor Who watch uh, came to Colony in Space and the end of episode four is when the master is like, he arrives on Xarius and he's posing as the adjudicator. And then for some reason there's a gunfight and then, uh, he comes out there, uh, and to the doctor and Joe says, Oh, it looks like you two are going to become the victim of spare bullets. Ah! And then he points a gun at it. Ew! You know, like, and then at the end of the next week, Oh, nope. I'm just going to take my gun back. It's like, okay, you're just basically doing cliffhanger acting. You're suddenly homicidal during the cliffhanger, but then immediately not. And I felt like Madam Ching was like, you know, <laughs> I told you not to touch me before I kill you and she was like whoa geez what was all this about and then they go to the opening credits and all of a sudden she's just sort of like holding him there she like her 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 mentality changed a lot before and after the opening credits. <laughs> on a whim yeah and, and and again and again when she told off the kid for hugging her that yeah true yeah she yeah yeah did it have to be definitely, did it have to be Madame Ching? Over the course. It was weird. It was a weird celebrity historical, so to speak, where we didn't learn anything about the celebrity. This is, but this histor- has happened before with, um, I can't remember the name of the, the nurse in the Santaran one, but the same thing. She's, yeah. Here she is. It's a big deal. Mary oh, no, Seacole. it is. We just kind of brushed her off. Yeah, like, Mary Seacole. She's yeah. sort of yeah, exactly, a supporting yeah, like, character in it. I mean, it's great. Just, it's great that they're raising, yeah. you know, hey, here's this person from history, but like then 
you're just basically yeah, but then tell me about them like right. you know don't give me they're a great pirate okay i kind of guessed that from them pirating yeah we, but we didn't get a hell of a lot about like mary sequel for example but yeah, i think we exactly. got a little more yeah, we got more than I thought. That's true. Uh, yeah, that I yeah. knew about her, f- to be fair. But I mean, you Which know, is not a lot. So yeah, it, they made it, but... it look like Madame Chick was gonna be like the the big lead co lead character, yeah. and she's really not. She's really, really. And then, not. not only that, this guy from the 1500s, whose name again escapes me, yeah. comes in and starts barking orders. And she goes, "Okay," and I'm like, "Wait a minute, why should she be listening to this guy? Yeah, like, she's in charge. You're 300 years anyway. older than I am. You know, you don't you yeah. know nothing of this time. You don't even <laughs> you don't even know what Twitter is yet. I mean, uh, you know." <laughs> Thank God, yeah. lucky guy. Anyway, your your notes, Chris. Uh, moving uh, along. Yes, um, uh, <laughs> I love the whole sea devil land parasite exchange. Because at the end of the day, the sea devils didn't call themselves sea devils. No, that was something land crawlers. Them. Land crawlers is what they called uh, humans. Not and, and land pa- land parasite. Was land parasite. I still prefer, prefer land bastards myself. Yeah, I like land me. bastards. Uh, Land crawler, uh, didn't Toyota make a land crawler? I'm pretty sure they did. Um, yes. Yeah. The Toyota. Isn't that how you get across the surface of Tatooine? Was that a land crawler? Uh, a land crawler, yes. Sand crawler. I know what you mean, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the one thing but, Stephen has to correct. But my pedantry, <laughs> my pedantry took over there, Chris. You got me. You got me. I, uh, I admit it. I admit Ladies it. and gentlemen, we got him. Yep. <laughs> Um, no, I thought it was cute because, yeah, because, uh, you know, all the promotional materials like Sea Devil, Sea Devil, Sea Devil, Sea Devil, and uh, yeah, it's one of those things that yeah. gets lost that the Sea Devils never did. That's not what they called themselves. No, um, yeah, the Sea Devils, yeah, <laughs> when, when the Sea Devil was speaking, it was basically almost impossible to know, and so that's probably why we had the little necklace thing lighting up, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's like you know, a zoom window lighting up when someone's speaking, yeah, that, didn't, know, that like, didn't really bother me all that much, no. It, I mean, They're not well, doing just, much of anything. Yeah. That's what bothered me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, I, I'm i of the opinion, uh, and rightly or wrongly, that if if a character is speaking, you should be able to figure out that they're actually speaking. <laughs> but when they wave their I arms, mean, I'm the one who's speaking. <laughs> I am the I hey, your, new, look, your new look, fangled look at, theatrics. Look at, what they, look at what they've done in the past with the Daleks. How Daleks would like move like irrationally around yep. just to indicate they were the ones that were speaking. They still so. do. Yeah. They still do. Yeah. So yeah, it's <laughs> see. I want to see some flailing by the sea devils. Just just outright flailing. <laughs> what are. is going on? Like a muppet. <laughs> Stranger yeah. things has happened to say the least. Yeah. Um, sea devil on the statue. We covered that. Mm-hmm. Um, so when the sea devil got awoken, um, whatever from no, please, the, please don't say that. We're gonna have a headline in the mirror tomorrow. Woke sea devils. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when, when it got freed from the statue, what exactly triggered the call to his comrades? Were they hibernating dormant? Were they just He said that they've the woken seas? them up. Like as he's doing, as he's giving a speech to them, he says, you, you have awoken to yeah. help me. And, and, and come, yeah. come to my aid or whatever. Yeah. They'd have gone door. But, um, like <laughs> what, what exactly, like, how did that actually happen? I don't know. It's not oh, I think they've no. papered over that too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, why do the sea devils have a ghost ship for the flex? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's pretty cool flex, admittedly. I mean, that's, the, that's reasonable. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> the, uh, establishing shot, quote unquote, of the ship in 1533, which was just a static painting, looked super duper icky and fake. And <laughs> here's, I, re- here's, I, re- I gotta, I hate to break this to you, Chris. Many, 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 many films have had super icky and fake paintings yeah. introducing things. Oh, like so death in my, no- in, death in my notes, I, yeah, for oh, instance, God. yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's a whole. Thing. That yeah. is horrendous. It looks like an allergy medication commercial. It's not bad. It's just horrendous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it looks like it had no budget. And really it had a budget. Bad, but it anyway, had a budget. Um, budget. My my in my notes, I put it may as well have been the stock Viking boats in uh, time middle. <laughs> it might very very well have been them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Red Notice cost two hundred and fifty million dollars to make, and there are better shots of this than there were in that. Just say I've still not I mean, seen that. Surprise that. Me. Don't, don't I'm see never that. going to see it. Don't so. see that movie. It's terrible. Um, favorite line of the episode: "No ship, Sherlock." I like that uh, one. My, that's my least favorite line. I think of the that episode. one resonated like, with ah, people. Come on, <laughs> really? You're gonna do that's this? That's a bit kind of an easy one. Yeah, <laughs> I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I kind of liked where she goes. I was, I was spoiled. I wanted to say that line, but I forgive you. I thought that was kind of nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they're standing in the door in the doorway of the TARDIS under, under the sea, uh, where the sea is greener, um, 
they start talking about their feelings and then they quickly move on to, you know, solving the problem at hand and just, um, Manda Gill's performance of, of Yaz just holding back her feelings yeah. when all she wants to do is, is just, you know, let them out. Yeah. And, uh, she, she does a very, very good job there. It was a good performance. What you could tell is just sort of brewing up. And then, and then when she realizes that, oh, the sea floor is disappearing, that she has to like, okay, this is probably important, but like, she sort of has this sort of like, oh, sort of like, you know, coming down moment a little bit from the, uh, emotional intensity that she mm-hmm. thought was going to happen. That we all thought yeah. was going to happen, but it never did because of the murka. The murka <laughs> spoiled it. <laughs> the goober fish. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, um, this sounds like we hated it. I don't think we hated it. We just um, were like middling no, on it. I mean, there's there's always good. There's always bad. But I did, so hate hate love definitely in the middle. Like I don't hate. I could sit and watch this again. Am yeah, I going to be exactly. in any rush to do it? Probably not. I, exactly. I'm yes, not because it's not available on iTunes for in Canada as of recording right now. So uh, I know it is in the U.S., but uh, once again, the availability of Doctor Who just changes from uh, from episode to episode. It seems, but um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It it just it it just I'm more fascinated to find out what went wrong with it than I am. To, <laughs> wanting to to watch and find something is, to enjoy out of it that's just how i work so especially coupled with the fact that uh chibnall's contributions to doctor who magazine were so minuscule versus say moffat for example yeah this is this is where you want uh, a chibnall version of the writer's mm-hmm. tale uh just to know what well, what what happened how why yeah what, what all did COVID screw up or, or, you know, what happened for other reasons? I know. Like I, I'm, I'm probably going to be using this, uh, this compare, maybe I already use this on this podcast or just when talking to myself, which I do a lot of. And the Chibnall era in my mind is sort of going to go down like the modern series version of the Graham Williams era in that it followed a much more successful era. I was sort of like viewed as like, okay, being not quite anybody's cup of tea. And then, uh, pretty much derailed by outside circumstances to finish off his run, like Shada was for Graham Williams. I mean, it just feels like COVID kind of threw a wrench in. I mean, it's fascinating. You look at the Radio Times. COVID this week. was a strike. Yeah, you look at the Radio Times. A two year like, long strike. Like two or three, two or three months into COVID, like May June of of twenty twenty, like they thought, are we even going to make a new series? Like you know, it was that like mm-hmm. close to being completely canceled and they would have just said you know well, but we're not if they had to not make doctor who for a year they probably weren't going to make doctor who again with that current team and mm-hmm. chibnall and whitaker just but it would, would have been two and done um mm-hmm. and it, so it feels well, i mean hence well not even not even well yeah, i sort of put two and any right sorry yeah but yeah even there's the stuff uh, surfacing this past week or whatever about chibnall maybe not being there after after series 12 because of covid yeah not knowing how to handle it yeah. you know it it, it, it felt like we're doing this to get it done with, I don't know. Uh, and this, this feels kind of like that. Like here are the last scrap. We're, we're salvaging something to put it out It felt there. like a bottle episode kind of. Yeah. It, it didn't, it wasn't a complete thought. It wasn't something was missing from it afterwards. It was sort of like, you know, put together in, in odd circumstances. It, uh, it was an episode of Doctor Who made under unfavorable conditions. Those are the ones mm-hmm. that I, in, once I know what happened, I find them fascinating. You know, I don't, mm-hmm. I like, but you don't find the actual show fast. No, you I find don't. I, all the stuff you're thinking about fast. Yeah. It's, it's, which it's is fine. Mechanics. I'm not criticizing. Yeah. I'm just saying. It's like when I'm watching. So, some, sometimes, sometimes you do want to know how the hot dog is. Made. I really do. Because, mm-hmm. uh, when I burned through TNG, uh, a few months ago and, you know, reading along with, um, memory album, off, uh, the wiki there and seeing how they made them and like okay here's an episode that was really bad what happened oh like the script fell through the cracks and they didn't have this one so they only had this one script and they had to they had studio dates and they had to make it so guess what we're making this episode we have eight days to film it and then it happened and they just going back to my base amp uh, analogy like you know the show <laughs> oh the show has to go on and I I appreciate the fact that with less than a complete story you know under their own power they managed to cobble something together but what went wrong what went wrong between that and it, when it came to air and like you know this is the stuff that i feel like we won't know about for quite a while because Chibnall doesn't feel like talking about it, and everyone has left doctor who now like there's no one involved in the show now who is pretty much there to sort of like tell people about it um so which makes it all the more fascinating how how various 
parts of COVID and everything else, how this affected the show in the, in the last year or so of its existence. I find it fascinating. Com- complete digression. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm having watched Picard and Discovery. I decided just to go back and watch old TNGs for the hell of it. So I watched uh, I, Borg, and then The Descent Two-Parter. The Descent Two-Parter is not good. No. But I was watching it going, you know what? This is, it's colorful. It gets it done in two episodes. Right. It's got a story that it just kind of does. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not a bunch of gray, endless get on with it so we can get to the last episode eight episodes hence i was like this is actually enjoyable which which <laughs> like, one is the descent that's not the ronnie cox one descent's it? the no it's no it's the one with um the borg and lore and it's not great it's oh the, but at least one yeah but yeah. they knew how to i hate to say this because i sound like i'm as old as i am but <laughs> just like, they knew how to tell a story oh, in them days they used to know how to tell a story in those. let me tell you about but, four by three television it was great doctor who is somewhat somewhat immune to this because even flux even though it is a whole arc thing mm-hmm. a lot of stuff happens in it for good or ill but a lot of stuff happens it's not butter spread over too much bread as you p- 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 put it Stephen and jr tolkien before you <laughs> and, and that's how i feel about a lot of streaming stuff today like yeah. you do Stephen. yeah so it, doctor who i'll give it this does not do that no uh, I you know what if there's and I don't want it to when they go to whatever new model it may end up going to no I know uh, I mean it's uh, I said um, I was on the um, uh, Doctor Who Flashcast on the Incomparable Network with Jason Stell and Chip Sutter our friend Chip um uh, earlier today and uh, and and Chip was sort of like saying to Jason about how you know you have to judge what you see before you. And I don't think you should be giving COVID a free, you know people a free pass for COVID but you know what I've seen I've seen a two or three TV shows that have very noticeably been affected by mm. COVID. And you know what? They did what they could. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I can't yeah. say, oh. And it's disrupted everything. Everything. Like it disrupted absolutely everything. So, and so still much. continues and, to, really. And by so, the same to token, be fair. Yeah. By the same token, would you prefer that they did nothing? Right. Because of COVID? Exactly. Do you, do you want them to stop mid-song while they fix their bass amp and then pick up with the new song? Or do you want to admire the fact that Led Zeppelin just kept carrying on with two, with a drummer and a singer and a tambourine player? And then you see, you know what? They gave them a round of applause when they got the bass, pl- the bass cabinet back up and running again. Because, damn you guys, you 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 kept it together for five minutes that was, doing whatever. That was, that was, I've never heard this, and I know that was pity applause. Yeah. It was like, well done. <laughs> I don't know. I love it. I appreciate the, this is what we, you know, when, when we come across a, a, a subpar episode or a really bad episode, I mean, I, we like to dig into why it was like that. No one ever sets out, ah, let's just, who cares about this? Let's just put whatever out there, you know, no one, no one sets out to make a bad episode. Bad things happen to an episode, uh, in between the making of it and the, and the broadcast of it. And that's where where we, I think we all of us find well, there was, interesting. There was a thing with um, an, interview, an interview I read with Jonathan Frakes um, this past week, I think, uh, talking about directing Star Trek. Mm-hmm. And you go in, uh, and this is probably more American than it is other regions, as we've heard Rachel Talley talk about. But you go in, you do your job, you cut the episode, you lock it, whatever, it's done, you move away, and then the network... And the execs get their hands on it. <laughs> right. And you don't even know what's going on, what they do, until it goes out to air. Yeah. And, and then you can fair. see how that's and been British affected. TV is a little so. different than that, yeah. So, yeah. Or it should be anyway. Where, where did, uh, I, I'm curious, Chris, where did, was that a recent comment that you saw that? Um, uh, I read it recently. I couldn't tell you when it was said. I only say that because... I, I will I will try to search my internet history for it to send you a link later. Sure, because um, I'm not to spoil anything uh, regarding Picard, but there was an episode recently which felt like there was a dramatic tension inserted into the episode in the editing process and not in the actual pro- production process. And it was an episode directed by John Franks. And I'm wondering if that was actually a reference to what I had see. happened to one of his episodes of Star Trek Picard. So, but I don't, in case people haven't caught up, I haven't watched the most recent episode, so I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, one to spoil episodes for people, but um, yeah, TV, TV is Warren, as you will, as you and I have been saying for the past 20 years, TV production is a world of nonsense. And it's really amazing that, of course it is. that we get yes. anything uh, made sometimes. But um, also, um, I went and saw everything everywhere all at once on Friday. Uh-huh. And after you've seen that, which is insane, it should not work. I'm not sure how it does, but it certainly does. Uh, watching anything else over the course of the weekend kind of, is kind of spoiled, <laughs> frankly, because right. 
this that's one of those movies that comes along once every 10 years where you're like how the hell did this happen and why is it so good <laughs> right so so you know and nothing else is going to compare because your mind's trying to figure it out still mm-hmm. anyway is there anything else chris do you have anything else on your list there knows to be did we burn through them yep. all we did we no not much left but a little bit sorry i was um <laughs> poking around my browsing history not a problem um that's a dangerous place yeah, as we've learned for the 12th dangerous. doctor so I'll do some more digging and see if I can find that interview for you later oh, on. Oh, it's awful um, kind. Awful kind. Anyway, so yeah, the Sea Devil's whole plan to flood the Earth and reclaim it. Uh, don't they care about the Silurians? Is that not going to flood <laughs> out well, and kill yeah. the Silurians? They're still asleep, like, right? It's like, they, they probably okay. have like a Silurian island where they'll do so, reality shows. <laughs> it's like, okay, you know, cousins, let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's screw you over. Yeah. Maybe that's uh, why they're in the secondary position at Warriors of the Deep because the Silurians remember them being jerked that's around like, true. like and they're like, listen, yeah, guys. This is this is that was their payback. Sure. Yeah. And this okay. is a stupid hats you gotta wear too. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can I can work with that, I guess. Right. Um what, what am I here? <clears throat> uh, yeah, the doctor again gets betrayed by humans uh, when the sea devil leader is killed by Ji Hun. Um, the doctor expresses her feelings for Yaz. Yay. Um, uh-huh. we had there that we talk. Presume, and, and so at the end there, uh, the call of Dan and die. Um, so. Oh, I forgot uh, all about that. The yeah. whole, the whole situation with Yaz and the doctor obviously got Dan thinking about, uh, about die and, you know, phones her and talks to her when she calls him back and such. And, um, there are. You know, maybe. I was have. wondering, has she screwed around with this phone as the doctor sometimes does? Oh, yeah. And are they still in 1807? Or is that present day beach that they're no, on? No, it's still 1807. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, just like Rose could call her mother. Yeah, and, that's, you know, that's what I figured, yeah. yeah. Times. So, so that I just get the impression that that's, you know, a, a, a rung in the ladder of, of Dan's. Dan's future. Yeah. Go off with Diane at the end of next episode. And that's good. If that's where they're going, that's great. It, you know, they're not having to kill him off or separate him with, by dimensions or turning him into a puddle of water or something like that. It's, uh, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Dan. I hope Yaz gets a proper send off here, too. I don't I hope she doesn't get puddle watered or whatever. <laughs> puddle watered. Puddle watered. Yeah. I suppose we'll see. Uh, in the next episode of Doctor Who, if if we're ready for that, um, with the with in the six months time, with the trailer, with the trailer, the <laughs> we'll next be more than was, ready, but the, six months. The I'm next sure. trailer. Well, before before we before we get to the next time trailer, that was that was the end of my list. Other than the trailer, but right. I'm curious if Warren had anything else to contribute. No, nope, for... you pretty much covered everything. Got it was, all. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think we've uh, I think we've sliced Except for this trailer, which I'm sure will take just about as much time. I f- yeah. So yeah, the trailer that uh, how, many, how many times how many times did we all watch? it? I've only watched it the once. I have skimmed seven or so. I'm literally uh, I'm just speed scrolling through it right now, uh, which is mm-hmm. there it is right there. Um, where there's Doctor Who and she's looking very and then I uh, haven't then there's Ace and there's t- I, like it took me half a second. To like, I uh, wait a I'm second. A bad fan. That's Tegan. Yeah, yeah. I did not figure out it was Tegan at first, and then A showed up, and I actually did this. <gasps> I actually did that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I went back. I'm like, I know I'm supposed to. Oh, that is Tegan. Okay. Yeah. I I very much out loud said, "Holy bleep!" Right. Uh, at the end of it, yeah. I mean, well done for keeping that under wraps. I never heard boo. I mean, I think I've heard no. that Daleks might have been back, but then again, you just like you know, of course there and you, there there uh, were there were rumors yeah. out there. Yes. Oh, and the Daleks showed up at the first couple frames. I said to myself, oh, these guys again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> again with the Daleks. Okay. Uh, but no, Nissa, I mean, that's what I, uh, Nissa, a- Ace and Tegan, that's what I, you know, all this talk about, oh, let's get doctors back and everything. And we'll try and pretend we'll, we'll have to explain away why they don't look like they're from 1986 anymore. and everything. But with yeah, compa- don't explain this. Yeah. They're just. It's later. It's their yeah. natural timeline. This this is yeah. what's so intriguing to me. I wonder what what's it. Obviously, Tegan and Ace have been um, uh, working on their laser rifle technique uh, over the past thirty or forty years, which is kind of. Cool. Well, I can totally see Ace doing that, but, <laughs> but Tegan left because things were too violent. So maybe she did a hard left turn on that. She's <laughs> into violence yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, so somewhere pre credit sequence. She's, the, uh, the, uh, she, the, she's she's now Britain for the British Brexiteer. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I hope not. Br- Please pre- don't uh, bring that in the world of Doctor. Pre credit sequence. Of the uh, the anniversary special where like Tegan's at to you know her auntie Vanessa's old place in London or something. There's a knock on the door and it goes oh and there's like a rifle in a in a in a basket on the bottom and Tegan looks up and it's Eric Sayward and says here you'll need this and just like yeah <laughs> and he teaches her the ways of the force <sighs> of how to fire off a machine gun 
like a proper oh, companion. God. You know, you know that picture of uh, Oscar Isaac going. Ugh. <laughs> That's the face I'm making right now. Minus is that, the handsomeness, Oscar yeah. Isaac. Is that a Moon Knight thing? Uh, no, it's just it's just a, it's a meme of from no, from Rise thing. of Skywalker where it's just uh, he says so somehow Palpatine returns and then they find a frame of him going <laughs> just to comment on how dumb the idea is. Right. <laughs> waiting for that. Um, Fair enough. Well, because it's dumb. So uh, I was waiting for that so too. So my my favorite part I'm just going to put it out there of the trailer Dude. is the uh, Rasputin looking master. I know he's I, he's I, super I, I really clean cut to... and then he's not. I, I am clean disturbed. Cut. He is more evil clean cut. I'm like no, that is not right. He should not look like. You should where it's a beard. Where's your beard, Spock? Damn it! I know it was like it. it, it he was so clean cut. He almost looked like he was like de aged. Like he almost like so it's like how oh, I've never seen Sasha Dewad so so clean shaven before. Are you sure that's him? Did they like digitally alter his beard or something like that? I mean, he's still a handsome fella, but <laughs> it's handsome baby fella. handsome. So yeah. Yeah, that's intriguing. Uh, Kate Stewart's back. I suppose we weren't that surprised. Hope I mean, I, let's face it. We kind of hope that she would be back after her like passing off in the last episode of Flux. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Vin- Vinder's back in there Vinder's as well. back as well. We? <laughs> okay. I like Vinder, like, all right. I mean... Vinder's fine. I got nothing. But if you're going to have the all-star squad, then Vinder, he's he's going to get short shrift, basically. Right. Boils down to. Um, so, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a, a, a jam-packed thing. And it kind of... And Ashad is the... back somehow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, one, yeah. Ashad. One... Yeah, that's right. The Cybermen. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, uh, when, when we saw the uh, first few frames of the Daleks and, and the lone Cyberman with the Cyberman behind him, my, my first thought was, are we flashing back to something? Or That's exactly what I thought, too. But yeah. this is all this is all new stuff by the look of it. So you reverse um, the polarity of the, the tissue compression eliminator and unshrunk him, I suppose. Yeah. Like, honestly, <laughs> like, we don't, like, we, you know, we see brief shots of, of uh, you know, the Daleks and stuff, but honestly, we, the Daleks were in flux and we barely saw them. They just sort of, sort of yeah. floating by. I mean, they could just be that, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, and the the master being mentioned with the, in the doctor's conversation with herself at the end of flux. It's good to, I think he's good to have be, that, that. He'll be the crux of the pass. whole thing, I'm sure. Yeah. Like he's got Oh, be. of course. Has to be. Has to be. Has to be. Yep. Um, um, mm-hmm. But the, um, oh, what's I going to say? Um, Orange spacesuit. That's what you're gonna say. Makes that's that important. makes yeah, sense. It wasn't, but important. we can go there. Yeah, mm-hmm. some separate promo pics came out with both Dan and uh, the Doctor in the orange. Yeah, orange spacesuit separately from each other. Honestly, that could be, that could be pre-title sequence. I mean, you know, like oh, they're floating out in space in their orange spacesuit, and then all of a sudden, oh look, something else has happened, and then that bit is instantly forgotten. But hey, iconic orange spacesuit, which is like. 16 years old now um i wonder <laughs> if it's the same spacesuit that'd be really cool if it's the same in in, in the, the publicity stole with dan the the helmet the glass visor of the helmet is broken so well, how, tall see is what that's all how tall is uh jody whitaker uh much quite a difference there, whitaker five six or something yeah it's five yeah, five five six all these close to six feet so that yeah maybe some alterations on that spacesuit if it's the same well, one tenant was i'm a sure they're gonna imply it's the same one story tenant was a lot taller than both of them so yeah, yeah. Still is, in fact. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, looks uh, looks very intriguing. Um, Jamie Magnus Stone directing it because they shot it during uh-huh. that block, I think. And uh, oh, that's what I was going to say. Um, uh, had a brief exchange with somebody on Facebook about the trailer, mm-hmm. and um, I had said how I had heard rumblings of uh, Tegan and Ace's return, but I didn't didn't necessarily believe them until I saw it happen kind of thing. This right. is why I and, stay away from your second their, portions are such nonsense. Mm-hmm. I was completely surprised. Yeah, me too. Their, their response was, uh, well, if that's what they're going to show us in the trailer, what aren't we seeing? Oh. But that is also the fan trap uh, based on the Star Trek episode, the man trap. <laughs> because because, uh, because we do that all the time. Across the surface of Tatooine. Yeah. There's, there's, there's not... There's, they're not wrong, but also by the time October rolls around, God only knows what insane construct fans will have come up with. That's true. October, <laughs> six months try, to speculate. Try. Yeah, in a week or so, well, they're going we'll to come up much with, sooner than October. Yeah, I Ian know. and Barbara are in fact the Daleks, or so. Who knows what? Like, yeah, I'm intrigued to see what. I mean, you know, now that we have, uh, we don't, we don't have an air date. We have an air 
season. Uh, we don't have a title, um, but we have a, a sure <laughs> assurance that there's going to be an episode. I'm wondering with everyone have, you know, I saw Mandip Gill doing the uh, odd uh, uh, appearance on a BBC show or two this weekend to promote the episode because, you know, Jodie Whittaker is like six months pregnant now and like everyone else is like gone for the show. So they have to sort of cobble together. Anyone want to promote this thing that you shot like a year ago, but nobody is actually, there's not even a head office anymore in Roth Lock to uh, work on this thing. Um, so I'm intrigued what the promotional effort will be for this last episode of Doctor Who before an entirely new, different era. Well, the fact era. that it's centennial means there will be promotion from that end of it, too. I, yeah, I think that B, maybe the BBC sort of handle this one, like, centering around the, yeah. the, the, yeah, the centenary and stuff like that. Like, will there be a thing around Comic-Con in July, which is returning for... I, I have my doubts. I like yeah, because who would be there? Like who? Just would... a guess. Like, I got not. I haven't heard anything. Yeah, I just think yeah. Do yeah. well three go, three exactly. three months from now, Jodie Whittaker would be either you know very close to delivering her child, or yeah. may have already done so. Yeah, that she has she's, a more she's important a, she's thing a, to take care of than Comic Con. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she's got bigger fish to fry. And you know, no offense to people who make the show, but when you're at San Diego Comic Con, people are most often there to see the stars of the show and not the people who make the show. So I, I'm mm-hmm. one. Man of, man not of, us. I'd like to point out. Yeah. But, I, but we're the minority there. Yeah. Man of Gill's busy doing that stage play now, and she's I don't know how long she's play. she's set to to do that for. Yeah. So I I'm I'm curious to see what happens with. So like, will there be a Doctor Who presence at San Diego? comic-con will it be the next regime will it be the rtd2 regime will they be announcing a new doctor at san diego comic-con it'll be 14th doctor david Tennant. yeah i don't think rtd is gonna steal the old team's thunder like that i don't think seem his way no it doesn't you know um but it's a shame that i feel like just because of the timing of things like comic-con and the first full return of comic-con will be doctor who less probably you know like with nothing really happening with this well this show is all about bad timing frankly so (laughs) that's true it feels it feels right this year closing out with like you know having having them turn down a a slot at comic-con 2019 um uh, to be, have like, here you go. You, you can have a spot if you want, pre- have your trailer for the, for their last episode ever. Nah, stop doing stuff. I don't think, I don't think we'll have a trailer. Not I anyone. have to wonder just if how big Not a deal San Diego no. Comic-Con is going to be. Like, I think it'll be a bigger deal than previous years, obviously, yeah. but has the time passed for this kind of stuff? Have, has this, has all this nonsense of the last two years kind of not destroyed these things, but look at Macworld or not Macworld, WWDC and mm-hmm. all the other, like that's all virtual now. Like, uh, and that's a business thing. That's different. Yeah. Comic-Con. E3 e- e- straight up canceled. EC yeah. canceled. SDCC uh, celebrities may not want to go like, or not yeah. have the time to go because it takes longer to make stuff because of COVID. Like there's a whole bunch of reasons why. And also I don't know how well the online SDCC did, Mm-hmm. But the, with e, E3 as a good example, Nintendo years ago decided, oh, we're just going to put out our own video things when we want to. And Sony's doing the same thing. Right. And I could see entertainment. Do, Marvel is already doing that. People sit through Disney shareholder events. I've done it, which is stupid, <laughs> <laughs> to listen to two hours of <laughs> right. raw business nonsense and synergistic hoo-ha and spreadsheets uh, uh-huh. just to get to Kevin Feige telling me titles of things. Right. So if I'm willing to do that, like, wh- why not do It's cost effective for everybody. Uh, th- yes, you, you make a good point, but there's, uh, I mean, it's also more than just a trade show. It's also a convention where people go to, and you know, the Wizard yeah, Worlds yeah, yeah. and yeah, those I know, I know, conventions I know. are going on as we speak. I just, so. I just think in general, those things are going to be a little more low key than they used to be. Yeah. Le- for less, a bunch of different reasons. Yeah. Gas, plane, uh, ticket prices, all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's intriguing. I, I, I haven't been following the uh, Comic-Con um, news or anything. I don't know how far in advance they mm-hmm. announced guests or anything like that, but uh um, as to what will happen there. But, um, but yes, yeah, so as mentioned in, in our chat on our live stream by Steve Manfred, uh, uh, Russell T Davies did say that, you know, he's waiting until the Chibnall era is over before they sort of like properly take over. But, mm-hmm. uh, and I suppose, you know what, I mean, with them making, uh, that n- Nilly show, what Nolly, Nolly show, um, which might not take that long. It's only three hour long episodes, but that's what they're making right now at Bad Wolf. And, uh, so they're not even making Doctor Who right now. But I, fi- I imagine that you have a pretty good lead in time that you could wait until like October, November to actually start recording um, that 60th anniversary special, uh, which is going to air yeah. and, you know, in 13 months after the last Doctor Who episode. Aired. Although so it's, it's technically at don't, some point. You don't even need to announce a new Doctor until you start recording then. Other than, well, so what do you do at the end of the centenary special? I Regeneration, think... cut to credits, no no new Doctor shows? 
I know. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they'll I see, see the new happening. doctor. I, they'll show the new doctor. I really sure. don't see it happening. It would be intriguing, though. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be cool to regenerate on a cliffhanger no. for the first time? No. No. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be cool. Everybody would hate it, except yeah. you. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be different. It would go down like a lead balloon. Yeah, yeah it would go down. Everybody would accuse them, rightly or wrongly. Right. That, well, you never actually planned for anything. You have no idea what's going on. You know what Twitter's like. They that's would be baying for blood at the very thought of this thing. That's true. Well, we'll see. Six months time. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, depending on what you believe, or new doctor's already been cast. It's David Tennant, and uh, you know, uh, he's got I a thought you said a new doctor. Mm-hmm. So, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, one thing we did forget to uh, to uh, report on. It's not stats as such. We'll have overnight viewing figures uh, to mock them, uh, but not in Warren's case. We're, we're actually going to play them up to annoy Warren. Uh, but yeah. no, our 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 official Twitter poll of uh, what do you think of Doctor Who: uh, Legend of the Sea Devils? Here are the results. Um, as of as of recording, it's still open for six days. If you want to wager in on our Twitter page, sixteen point nine percent loved it. Uh, thirty-one point six liked it. The exact same percentage said it was okay. Nineteen yeah, right. nineteen point nine percent said it wasn't for me. So yeah, I kind of kind of less enthusiasm <laughs> for this one. I dare say it was it was okay. Is where I'd I'd cast my vote. Yep. Um. The anyway the uh, the article about uh, about the um next episode of Doctor Who is on the refreshed Doctor Who.tv website. It's all completely new. They even have a randomized story. You can just hit a random story and it, and it will select one. I feel like we could almost use that for commentaries or something in the future. I mean, how fun would that be? Not as much fun as you no. think. So I don't know. If you want to check mm-hmm. out, check it out, Doctor Who.tv, which is the, uh, the, the home of Doctor Who. Um, I mentioned that uh, um, the... Legend of the Sea Devil is not available yet on iTunes in Canada. I think it is in the U.S., you said, Chris, I think earlier this week to me in private. Yeah. Um, but the Blu-ray for both this and Eve of the Daleks is coming June 28th. So they're packaging two episodes together, but you got to wait three more months for a third episode. So... It's kind of hoping they would have packaged them all together, but maybe, maybe one day we'll just get a whole Jodie Whittaker set on one. So I would, I would assume as, that as we did with well, well, I was say Eccles, Eccleston, yeah. but I mean, I mean, as we did with Tennant, as we did with Smith, as we did with Capaldi, because I bought the Tennant and Capaldi sets. Yeah, so. I I want them nice and compact, and I also want Russell T Davies to keep at the very least the uh, the current logo, which I think is great. <laughs> it's not going to happen. No, you got to keep it, Russell. This listen, RTD. You better know this if you're listening or watching. Not watching. Um, is that nerds, and you're a nerd like us, uh, we care. He's not a nerd like us. I just like to stop you right we, there. We care about our DVD shelves, damn it. And uh, we're getting, you know, we're, I'm making a pretty nice dent in, in my DVD shelf from replacing them with Blu rays. And if Stephen Moffat would agree with you on this, I think, I but think, I don't think RTD will. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Moffat went to the trouble of writing in regenerations for we, ones we didn't see because it drove him crazy. <laughs> He's the kind of guy who'd be on the on board this whole logo shelf <laughs> thing. True. I don't think and, RTD cares, yeah. nor and, should. And he. mentions of big Finnish companions. That's true. Yeah. Close on the other hand, Moffat changed the logo a couple times around. So he did, didn't he? He did a couple times, even even subtly at times. But um, his error also brought Matt Smith's face back to the opening credits. He did. That's true. Just saying. Anyway, uh, on that note, uh, let's take a, a dip back into the past for our weekly segment. It's called The Time Lash, where we look back at what aired this week, for the most part, uh, in history in Doctor Who and, and talk about that. It's funny. I just, uh, I just looking on the website, uh, tragicalhistorytour.com, which is where we get our info from. And I just noticed, oh, there's another Sea Devils episode that aired this day in history. It's today's. It's today's episode. Uh, 2022, this day in history on April 17th, uh, <laughs> Legend of the Sea Devils aired. That is quite the lash. Yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the Band-Aid off here All right. and mention in 2010, we have uh, Victory of the Daleks. 12 years um, old. Quick, quick little straw poll amongst us and those in the, uh, those in the live stream chat. All right. Uh, especially those who weren't a big fan of Legend of the Sea Devils, which would you rather watch? Oh. Victory of the Daleks or Legend of the Sea Devils? Legend of the Sea Devils. <sighs> yeah, Legend of the Sea Devils, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so. You know? like, Well, can, oh, can I have the first third of Victory of the Daleks and the last two-thirds of 
of sea devils. Sea devils. Well, um, yeah, for a damn confusing episode, but sure, you won't have to worry about the new paradigm Daleks, which I think they're okay as long as they are using them as Toyota Y four uh, off road vehicles because I think they'll be pretty <laughs> good there. Um, do you remember that leaked clip from Matt Smith uh, when somebody on set was recording Matt Smith recording his dialogue from like I am the Doctor and you are the, and everyone thought this sounds awful. This new Doctor is terrible. This came out like two or three months before the episode came out, apparently. And it was like, oh my God. Fans basing everything on a tiny <laughs> snippet? I can't believe I it. I know. And, but um, honestly, I mean... And then, uh, and, then we lear- and then we learned of the legend that is Andrew Gunn. Andrew Gunn directed this and The Beast Below. Um, the previous weeks was not uh, very flashy. This was just downright bad. <laughs> there were some bad shots in this, guys. It was like uh, the infamous shot. There the, are a few. the one that I think of is when, like, you know, Matt Smith is standing about 10 feet away from the uh, Supreme Dalek when they're having the conversation with the Jammy Dodger. And then they cut to the TARDIS scanner. And they're literally like, his, like, sucker is, like, touching him and stuff. It was like, this is really bad. There was just some bad. Bad edits, bad direction. He never worked. He never worked on this show again. Did Andrew go? Oh, I did like the Jamie Dodger fake out as a thing. <laughs> it was all right. They made a big. I mean, it, it it felt like the Daleks, the new paradigm Daleks, were not only going to become the new Daleks, but they were actually going to start their own spinoff show. Like it had that like, hey, old <laughs> Daleks, go away. We're going to go on our own adventures and stuff like that. But I'm sure that the Doctor might come by every single week to make sure we're doing <laughs> okay. That's kind of what it felt like. It was bad. Didn't like that episode. They weren't great. But Stephen Moffat has acknowledged they were bad. I, but on the other hand, you got to give him credit for trying something at least because the Daleks were getting a little old hat at the time. True. I. It was weird though because they thought um, that it, they did, it, Matt Smith should not be looking down at a Dalek. That was their main reason because he was taller than Eccleston and, and Tennant. So they thought, well, they diminish in his presence. But also, you got to yeah. give Chibnall's uh, era of credit because they did change what the Dalek looked like, and it was cool, and there was a reason for it. <laughs> like, and so yeah. that totally worked compared to the, the new Paradigm ones. That's true. I mean, I do like the colors, um, but it's that weird bump on the back. They just seem bulkier. They seem needlessly bulkier, you know? It's the junk in the trunk, yeah. Yeah. And then the I mean, we- the they're we- actually, and they, they appear in later episodes, and they don't seem quite as distracting as they do in Victory of the Daleks. Well, no. Like they're in uh, Thingamabob. Asylum. The, Asylum. The last thing, that, but also they're in, why can I not remember the name, for God's there's sake? A, big bang. The, there's a stone Thank one you, the in big the big bang, bang. Pandora opens. Yes, Hopins. yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, there's, and I think there's an actual new paradigm Dalek in the group of monsters too and it just kind of yeah. works there yeah when you just yeah. sort of throw them all together like that like you know like like the yeah. Ford Edsel or something to give a really timely yeah. reference but you know. they're still dumb but they're less dumb yeah so quick results of the straw poll a uh, very very slim victory for Legend of the Sea Devils wow interesting well you heard it here folks uh, Legend oh, sorry what was Legend of the Sea Devils went out over the victory of the Daleks mm-hmm. yeah okay Only just, but yes. Yeah, okay. Just imagine if Power of the Daleks actually came back, and then we'd be looking at Victor. Like, we don't need you anymore. We don't need you in, you know, in that first third of the episode, basically recreating Power of the Daleks. They get, no, you don't need that. Don't need the cover version anymore. We found the original. I mean, that was was Mark Gatiss, basically, wasn't it? Just being Mark Gatiss. That's true. Uh, what else do you, what else happened this week? Um, a couple of like episodes two and stuff. Uh, I'm not as much interested in those. I'm interested in episode one of the War Games, aired April nineteenth, nineteen sixty nine. Uh, kicking off Patrick Troughton's last story would not end for another three months. Essentially, June what twenty first? I think it aired the, the last episode. But um, but yeah, very very good episode. The War Games. The whole story is great, especially episode one. Considering they were flying by the seat of their pants to do it, yeah, damn right, it worked out. Uh, worked out probably better than they hoped for. Less certainly better than Legend of the Sea Devils did. Think about it. I think we're working like a week out, a week out of broadcast at that point. Yeah, God, it's madness. Madness. Yeah, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing they filled a ten episode thing, and uh, I mean, obviously, it feels a little redundant here and there, but uh, mm-hmm. far, far less so than than it should yeah or could does uh perhaps redundance uh speaking of which maybe revenge of the cybermen fits in that uh, uh dare you. six years How later dare you. april 19th 1975 
I uh, love the stuff on the on the Nerva Beacon or whatever it's called in the story. Like that stuff, I found really enjoyable. It's just when they go down to Voga. <laughs> yeah, I just like how the guy that played was it. Uh, what the hell is the guy's name? Kellner. Uh, um, Jeremy, well, I can't remember his name right now. But played yeah. the exact same role in the pilot of Blake 7. He did, I know. In the first episode of Blake 7. So. Uh, Jeremy Wilkin? I think that's his name. I'm like Tom Baker in the Tom Baker years, trying to remember his name. Uh, I, think it's John, I think it's Jeremy Wilkin, who was in, yeah, he's in Blake 7. And the little uh, brush, the little um, brush with a little mm -hmm. spy thing in it, that was an actual yep. prop from uh, Live and Let Die that was made like oh, two years prior okay. to that. Yep, actual prop. That's cool. From a James Bond movie. Not for the first time, not for the last time that Doctor Who and James Bond shared props. I feel like either Gav Rymel and the Terry Nation Army crew have or will have made a video about the, the prop sharing between Doctor Who and the James Bond universe. I might have imagined that in my head. Or I... Or... <laughs> You tend it. to do that, yes. Or seen it and forgotten about it, because just it seems like something they would do. And uh, I don't remember which night now, but um Planet of the Ood aired in on April night and a big day, April nineteenth, two thousand eight. I have to admit, I don't remember a lot about Planet of the Ood. There's I a saw it a while back and I, I, it's it's a spotty, but Lieutenant, it's got some great bits to it. Yeah. Lieutenant Darling turns into an Ood. That's true. He is, he is very weird in that but there's that great <laughs> thing where um, Donna understands just how bad the universe can get I think that's some really good acting on Catherine Tate's part. oh yeah that's the one I think yeah. that was when we were really getting sold on Catherine Tate like we thought oh, okay yeah. she's like sort of bullshit. still my favorite new companion yeah I well I, that wasn't the case when it started but then her performance in Pompeii which is great mm -hmm. convincing the doctor to go back and save someone like holy crap where'd this come from and then her crying with the uh, with the Ood, hearing them sing. Yeah. yeah, and then by the time turn left rolls around, you're like, oh, of course, she's awesome. Yeah, she really is. Um, I remember the weird scene, it's directed by Graham Harper, but there's that weird scene where that security guard decides, I'm going to go after the doctor with the... with the. Uh, yeah, that was a bit much. The crane. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the sous chef from Chef. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but it's David Tennant doing his, all his own stunts. He's it's That's him. Every single shot, I think, running up and down and avoiding well, a CG Terry thing. Walsh was probably too old at that point. <laughs> and or dead. But, and he's uh, the only stuntman in Britain. <laughs> yep. <sighs> Until he died. Anyway, uh, was he in Fury from the Deep? I don't know. But Victoria left the TARDIS on April 20th, 1968, at the end of Episode 6 of Fury from the Deep, which I think was the last story destroyed by the BBC, a film copy of it in 1974 or something like that? I can't remember. I don't know the details. Until, these, but. until they found Tomb, Victoria was one of those ca ca characters who I only knew from Doctor Who Celebration. <laughs> They're like oh, purely yeah. academic to me. I know. Like, like mm -hmm. we, what does she even look like? Who even knows? We have our first episode and that's it. And now we have like almost all of them. Kind of crazy mm -hmm. when you think about it. But we don't have Fury though, but um, yeah. Um, Hyde. We, we do. We do have Hyde. Hyde's great. Hyde's a great story. Hyde is good. April twentieth, twenty thirteen. And it feels very seventies. Oh. It's set in it, but it actually does feel like yeah. 70s. It's very brown. Very brown. Mm -hmm. ja mm -hmm. Jamie and I lived through it as a small child, so I know <laughs> viewers. Yeah, Jamie Payne directed that, as I recall, with like, and there were like shots, literally shot on candlelight. I think that was the first time Doctor mm -hmm. Who had done that. They've since done that again with like Matt. Um, Haunting a Villa Diodati because you could do that on TV now. You can shoot. 2013 was just about when cameras could do that. Yeah. Like with HD, HD up to that point. Like I was watching this thing about Battlestar Galactica, one of the first shows they did on HD in mm -hmm. 2005 or whenever that was, and it certainly shows. Right. <laughs> you watch it now and you're like, oh, this is really grainy. And and then you get 10 years, not even 10 years later, and you've got the latitude of film. You can do this candle stuff that you could never do with digital video before. No. It looks great. Oh, it looks great. That's a great looking story. Hide. And it's just it's just Doctor Who reuniting some weird monsters at the end. That's all it is, really. Yeah. It's a it's a And they are story. damn weird. It's a bit weird. Uh speaking of a weird love story, Daleks in Manhattan. Uh on <laughs> April how, how can we slag off Victory of the Daleks when we got these two? I know, bangers, April twenty first I mean, bangers, I mean crappy. <laughs> what a what a week for Daleks in history this week. We had Victory of the Daleks, we've got uh, actually, we got Planet of the Daleks episode three, a, an episode so unremarkable that they didn't even bother to save because uh, it never existed in color for the longest time. Uh, and now we have Daleks in Manhattan, where the Daleks, get this, uh, are in Manhattan in the 1930s. <laughs> that's about it, yeah. That's, well, that's about I it. mean, it's set in Manhattan. Yeah, Future Spider-Man so. Andrew Garfield's in it. 
Yeah. He is. That's right. And um, uh, current Spider-Man Andrew Garfield. Well, sort of. Yes. That's true. It's kind of like yeah. Uh, I I remember we didn't like Special that guest one. Guest star Andrew Garfield. Yeah. We didn't like this episode. I don't think. At well, the that's because it wasn't very good. No, no it wasn't good no. at all. No. Yeah, but I mean, it, there's a lot of awful nerds on Doctor Who forums at the time slagging off, I think, Helen Rayner or something like that, and basically chase her away from Doctor Who. And that's bad. That's bad news. Don't do that, people. The thing is, every era, although I had pains to think of a Jody one, uh, and maybe a Capaldi one, but definitely there's always that Doctor Who episode which ends with the Doctor yelling about something, and it just doesn't hit home. And that's this one. Or oh, it's yeah. Rings of Akaton. Or I'm trying oh. to think of a, um <laughs> Eccleston one on a can up top of my head, but... But it's got to be there somewhere. Well, Exos didn't have as many chances to have to, to do that. And Capaldi you know? must have had one of these episodes. I just don't remember which one it is. Where he yells and stuff? I don't think he has one where he yells. He's, but he's it, better at it, too. Yeah, so he's, yeah he's better at it. But. Was it? Because Helen Rayner came back the next year and did this on Tarn Two-Parter. Oh, she did too, didn't she? Well, she didn't like her experience uh, interacting with fans. I think she sort of said, oh, let's go see how my episodes are going down on the Doctor Who forums. And I... <laughs> I and, Surprise misogyny! Ta-da. Oh, what an awful thing! Yeah, so not 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 one of fandom's best uh, best days in history. Let's put <laughs> no, it that God. way. What are these best <laughs> days? <laughs> yeah, to go along with all their <laughs> shiny don't. beacons, you know, it's all perfect days apart from that one day, April twenty first, two thousand seven. They weren't as good. Have that you met day. fandom? More to the point, have you arrested fandom? <laughs> yeah, because you probably should. Uh, boy, we got a lot of new stuff. I like I like that we have more new series stuff here because uh, we focused a lot on the old stuff because we're old ourselves. But uh, Tooth and Claw aired April twenty mm-hmm. second, two thousand six. That's sixteen. I always damn forget years it's ago. good. It's really good. It's such it a good decent. episode. I, I go, eh, yeah. wolves, whatever, and then I keep it going, and I'm like, oh, I forget how great this is. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's in got a house. the kung fu. It's got the kung fu monks. What's not to like? That was odd. That oh, was... that's that's the distracting bit that puts me off watching it. <laughs> yeah. And then I go in and I realize how good it is. Yeah, it's, it was really good. But speaking speaking of uh, like early days of HD and whatnot, uh, the the CG in this for the werewolf. Pretty damn good for 2006, right? I yeah. know, like the fur, like fur is yeah. still tough to do, and I, I yeah. think in Ot Five, which is SD, and they were they did a pretty good job. I thought, yeah. yeah. I mean, what a year earlier, the ones, the the those uh, bat creatures from um, Father's Day, not fa- Father's Day, man. Am I saying the that Reapers? Right? Yeah, they're not, they're not great. <laughs> like you're, they're effective. You're but talking they, literally CG wise. They're not great. Uh, uh, the Reapers, yeah, the Reapers aren't the even the um, the uh, Krillotain, Krillotain, and the School Reunion from like yeah, exactly. Next I mean, week. they're well articulated and well animated, but they're just only so good you can make them look. They, I'm not yeah. trying to criticize anybody. No, they did the best think, they could at the yeah. time. Maybe it's because they're more Krillotain. I don't know, but I think the the the, the werewolf looked better than the Krillotain did. Yeah, I did. thought so. Did. Even I thought though so they're back to back stories. Yeah, we'll talk more about Scooby Reunion next week because that's when it aired. Um, but yeah, Tooth Claw is is fabulous. We see the do- does he wear the glasses for the first time? No, he doesn't. He wears it in New Earth. Never mind. But he there's a big powerful moment. Books and he puts on his glasses and Eros Lynn like cuts to different angles of the Doctor putting on his glasses. There's like a dramatic swoop sound when he's putting on his glasses and all the worlds are ra- nerds around the world united because they get yeah he's putting on glasses and we're nerds and we like glasses too. And now Doctor and Who's books. a nerd and we also like books and Come on. books. Yep. Then he goes and starts kissing girls, and that's what we nerds don't like. Damn, damn you, you betrayed <laughs> us, Doctor Who. Kiss that book. You had us figure it out until you went and kissed a girl. 2017, also April 22nd, a uh, smile aired, the second episode of the Bill uh, era of Doctor Who. With the also current emoji bots. Yeah. <laughs> when you speak emoji. Still kinda, it works. It works in the story, so I don't care. Yeah. And it, I I like it when Doctor Who does like trendy stuff when it has a doctor like Peter Capaldi there to go, uh, you know, like <laughs> that's true. that's be, that's because that's exactly what Peter Capaldi would do in real life. He would do that. It's like also what is it this? looks great. Like it's a it's a really well shot episode. They shot it in Spain. They shot the uh, the location stuff in Spain. That's right. And mm-hmm. that crazy. I mean, you're using what you got, but that doesn't yeah. make it any less well shot. No, no, that's right. It was uh, that was a good story. Yeah, I think I I think I liked it. I think it was all right. I haven't seen that one in a long time, actually, now that I think about it. I know there's, like, there's skeletons and bones and mm-hmm. um, fish cubes. A mention of the Ark in Space or a Ark in Space? Uh, there is, there's also uh, a mention, there's in the first four episodes of Series 10, there is a reference to a David Bowie song. And I think this one is um, Ashes to Ashes, I think. Hope you're happy. 
I'm happy. Hope you're happy too. I think is what Peter Capaldi says or something. Oh like right, that. yes, yeah. yes. But they never went anywhere. I thought maybe it was building up to a David Bowie uh, appearance, but it wouldn't be because he died the previous year, <laughs> and maybe it was a tribute to it. Yeah, so maybe it's a tribute. Side to side question: Have either of you yet watched Ashes to Ashes? No, no. haven't. Oh, it's man. finally okay. on BritBox. I can watch it though. It's finally okay, on. Okay, it is. Yeah. Well, then maybe I will get my button gear and watch it. Well, it's been like five days since Picard aired, and I haven't watched that last episode, so... Uh, fair. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get to Ashes to Ashes anytime soon. I'm sorry, Chris. It's 24 episodes whenever you do get to it. So. <sighs> it's a lot it's of... It's not, it's not the greatest of undertakings, but... No, but still. It's a lot of time. I liked it better than Life on Mars, so... Wow, because Life on Mars is great. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, let's talk about three things that aired on April 23rd in history. Uh, we'll start 1966. The Celestial Toy Maker, episode four, the final test, the last one, the last <laughs> episode, I believe, of the uh, John Wiles era. Am I right about that? Yeah, because AKA, AKA the one episode we have. Yeah, Innis Lloyd um, I think takes over after that. Just just to bring a, bring it back to Legend of the Sea Devils for a I second, might be wrong. sort of. Yeah. Um, previous to it airing, friend of the show Joy Piedmont used the hashtag. Rep sweats as in representation, right? And Celestial Toy Maker gives me the rep sweats. Well, yeah, I mean the outfit that he's wearing the whole time is like, oh, they called him the Celestial Toy oh, so Maker. Oh, that's a great, yeah. great hashtag, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, Chris, it exists, and that's uh, that's that's the main thing, I suppose, of that story um, is that uh, the episode that exists of the Celestial Toy Maker aired April twenty third, nineteen sixty six. We wouldn't we wouldn't see Michael Goff again until Batman in nineteen eighty nine. Hey, no, we would see him in Arc of Infinity. I'll have you know, he was oh, headed. That's right. He was oh, That's right. Yeah, heading. yeah. Right. Okay. That's all right. My bad. Forgot about him. Oh, you can't forget forget about that. You can't forget Gallifrey Coffee Shop. You have Gallif- to give up on being a fan now, Chris. I That's know. just the rules that I arbitrarily made up. Yeah. To be fair, I don't think he ever appeared in the Gallifrey Coffee Shop, but um, he probably ordered. He probably ordered pickup or something like that. You know, Castle and Spandrel would probably swing by and says, "I'm I'm here to pick up uh, Headed's uh, latte or something like that." And um, yeah, okay. Delos okay. got his name wrong on it as well. Yeah. Uh, Apparently he sounds like Watto, which I'm all for. John, I don't, it's tough to do a George Pravda accent. I've never tried it, and i got to work on it, I'll I gotta say. <laughs> no, you really you, don't. You have several actually, stories yeah. to pick from, at least. I, that's true. That's true. Um, 2005, Christopher Eccleston's first series, uh, April 23rd, the, the conclusion to the dramatically huge, awesome, amazing three-part cliffhanger of uh, Aliens of London concluded with World War Three, where it's mostly Doctor Who and Rose <sighs> and... Uh, um, what's her name? Uh, all trapped in a bunker and stuff as, uh, Harry Jones, Harry Jones. I keep wanting to call her Felicity something, but Harry Jones. That's because of Fly Del North. That's probably why you're thinking that's, of Felicity. That's exactly why I'm thinking that. Yeah. World War Three. Better than the first one because there weren't as many farting aliens in this one, as I recall. <laughs> yes, you are correct yeah. technically, but still not good until we get yeah. to, um, Boomtown. Yeah. Where the Slidian, the, do- well, the, the doctor would thank Slidian you for not good. farting while he's saving the world. That's true. Closed out the Keith Boak era though. We, we can say that with, a uh, with, um, positivity. Yeah. With a wave of sweat off our brow? Yeah, a little bit. So Keith Boak or Andrew Gunn? Oh, Andrew. Who's better? Oh, Who's Andrew better? Gunn, because Keith Boak probably did something to poor Chris Eccleston that annoyed the hell out of him, and he left Doctor Who for good because of that, so. True. Except for a big finish. You know? Yeah, Andrew Gunn didn't chase away Matt Smith, thankfully. So, yeah. It's easy for me. They already had Matt Smith in a three-year contract by that point, I think. <laughs> they, knew, they knew better. <laughs> they knew better to not just sign him to also, a one-year deal. Matt Smith's resume was... Pretty small at the time. Yeah, you need this, Smith. You better take BBC standard wage here. I mean, that's not the case now, but yeah. Not at all. Uh, And lastly here on our our trip through the the history of time, uh, 2011, uh, the beginning of Series 6 of Doctor Who, Matt Smith's second series, The Impossible Astronaut aired April 23rd, 2011. Uh, remember, remember those that big? There's a big launch in the states because, of course, they shot this episode <laughs> in Utah, and People it was forget a, what a huge deal Matt Smith sh- was in the states. Oh my huge. god! Yeah, everyone sort of says, "Oh, let's bring it back to like the heyday of Tenet and stuff." Honestly, with this sh- this show of ours in North America, anyway. Yeah, like it was bigger. It, with be- Smith. it became a worldwide thing in in North in North America. I saw this, bus this ads is, with Smith. This, this it was is insane. When yeah, BBC America really got on board as well. Yeah. They, with yeah. their screenings, screenings of this and 
um, you know, Moffat and Smith and Gillen and yeah, Garvel. Space and the wasn't a shell of itself, just to bring it back to Canada. Yeah, I, I want to. I don't remember this uh, specifically, but um, I want to say that series five, which was airing on BBC America, but they were still like two or three weeks out. And I think this was this was the first day and date. Day yeah. and date. That's right. God damn. First yeah. time day and date. Wow, six years on into Doctor Who. That's and there was some something. good timey-wimey in this one, if, if it's the first one. It's the first one, yeah. It's the first yeah, one. Of the two, yeah. yeah. It's like, I just loved all the fact that he's dead, and then he just kind of saunters out of the bathroom, and you're like, oh, I guess that is how this works. That's true. It's very Moffat Moffat was the, mas- the master at that kind of stuff. He, he, he was. so good at that. Yeah. Uh, a location that uh, Erica and I and have been to and you Warren. and uh, and me you were and there jake simpson in the chat he took us there that's true he did yep in uh in in uh, 2015 when we went to them that was crazy that's only four years after that usually it's we have to wait 40 years to see a doctor who location in the uk <laughs> that's true <laughs> wow now gone that uh that burger hut is uh is oh, now you're talking about well, the, the, the cafe the burgers yeah. weren't very good let's be honest no, here. it's not really it's a it's an approximation of uh, american food so Anyway, uh, that's that's all that happened in the uh, in the time last this week on this epic length episode of Ready Free Scar. Holy crap, we've been going for uh, like an hour and a half oh for an Lord. episode that we were very lukewarm about. So let's uh, <laughs> let's burn through the rest of this. Um, uh, speaking of the BFI, only because I was speaking of the BFI because they shot uh, some episodes of Frontier in space there, and that was literally the first ever Doctor Who location I ever saw because we that's wanted. That's true. By Same it. here. Yeah. yeah. Um, the BFI is uh, hosting a screening of the two Doctor Who uh, and the Dalek movies, the Peter Cushing movies, on June 19th with a Q&A after. Why are they doing this? Well, because on July 10th, there's going to be a 4K Blu-ray release, uh, probably just in the UK. It's a, it's, it's an, I don't know if I can warrant... July 10th is the cinematic re-release. The cinematic re-release, rather. The Blu-rays uh, come out, uh, one, is, one comes out in June, one comes out in July. Thank you for clarifying. Um... Yeah, I I bought the the recent Kino Lorber ones. There's a lot of the extras that are on that one, like the commentaries with um, uh, Rob, Rob Sherman, Rob Sherman and Mark Gatiss. Um, that's on yeah, that, there. That, that's on these. Yeah, that's on these, and there's an extra documentary. Of course, they're they're in 4K, uh, but um, I don't know if I'll spring for these, even if I have the opportunity the thing to. About 4K is that like I've watched stuff on 4K, and right? It is definitely better, but it's not like the difference between SD and HD. Really, it isn't like. Uh, you just kind of forget about it. And same with SD, honestly. I just kind of forget if I like it enough. Right. I don't care if it's SD. Wow. I, well, I, don't, know, I don't own a 4K TV. So I oh, don't, so yeah. there's no point in you having it. I don't these. particularly care about it. No, I guess not. I mean, you do notice a difference. Like the Expanse is in 4K and most of Apple stuff is in 4K. And you do notice, but it's it's a nice it's a nice to have, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That it is. Uh, we'll see if I get that or not. I, I mean, I'm trying to get my hands on a... Uh, I, I have a 4K Xbox. It's a bit iffy right now. I really want one of those, those new Xbox Series Xs, but they won't be I do not. come available until 2028 at this current rate, so I don't know. What yeah, I'm going to get the PlayStation 6 and the Xbox, whatever the stupid name is, for the next one. Yeah, maybe this one, because... Yeah, might as well just skip to the next one. And the... again, all these games are HD. They still look pretty good. They do. Even on my 4K TV, so who cares? That's true. Uh, there's a special, adi- oh my God, this is all, uh, this is up Warren's alley right here. There's a special edition of oh, Doctor yes. Who magazine, issue 60 of the special edition uh, series, Action Figures, The Essential Guide, <laughs> 1963. To quote Gumble, put it in my arm. <laughs> 1963 to 1996, which means that, that even the character, all the stuff that you have is not even represented here. This is just the no. first half. Yeah. <laughs> so we another one coming. Vintage dollies. April 21st uh, from Doctor Who Magazine. Uh, so you can pre-order it now. Links in the show notes. Radiofreescar.com. So all the, all the history about about stuff. That's that's cool. That's cool. Oh, yeah. I wanna, Hell, yeah. I want to I look into that. I want to I see all the Daypole variations that I never saw at Warp 1. Yeah, I was wondering about that myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, uh, on just a big finish, uh, out now is uh, Doctor Who uh, Unbound Doctor of War. Janice sets up with Colin Baker as the War Doctor because eventually- Yeah, he that's w- a confusing title. He will play every single character- uh, in Big Finish at some point. As long as they keep paying him, he'll do it. Yep. So there you that's go. That's how acting works, yeah. yeah that's basically. Co- that's coming from uh, from Big Finish. And, uh, and, and two, two, well, two sad notes, but first off, I mean, this, this is when we use a bit of the obituaries on here, but a happy birthday yesterday, Saturday, uh, April 16th, to Arnold Yarrow, who played Belal in Death of the Daleks. He turned 102 
on Isn't Saturday. His wife like a hundred or something, something like, like that. Wow. Yeah, it's insane. Like so and good for them. Frankly. Yeah, hundred and two. Awesome. Um, Earl Cameron, I think, remains the oldest person to ever uh, ever to be in Doctor Who. He died at the age good of one hundred and four a couple years ago. But uh, uh, Sonny Caldenez, who was in every single Ice Warrior story, passed away recently. He was also in uh, James Bond. Was he in uh, the greatest James Bond movie ever made? In that. Um, the Spy Who Loved Me, or was he in a different one? I can't remember now, but he was in GoldenEye? He was not in GoldenEye. <laughs> I see what you did there. Award-winning video game, GoldenEye? Yeah. Also played <laughs> uh, Campbell in, um, Camel, rather, not Campbell the Planet, Camel in uh, Evil of the Daleks. So he passed away. Apparently a very nice guy, so that's very sad. And uh, and Jeremy Young, the the first ever villain in Doctor Who, he played Cal in The Unearthly Child, uh, passed away. Seemed to be a very nice guy as well. Also appeared in Mission to the Unknown, and uh, was in the tripods for a few episodes in series one of the tripods. So that's where I know him best from. Uh, <laughs> he passed away recently too. So, so sad news to end this podcast as we usually do. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the live stream, everyone who listened to this on the live stream. I'm amazing at how many and many of you people stuck around for all this, uh, given how lukewarm we were on the legend of the sea devils, but, uh, uh, you were too, so yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. Um, so yeah, there's uh, there's no new Doctor Who for the next uh, six months, but there's going to be episodes of this podcast. Uh, we'll we'll be talking about all sorts of things to come. Uh, trust me, that we'll have stories for years to tell. Um, <laughs> Uh, on this here, po- I mean, we we hopefully we won't go on for an hour and a half about nothing. Uh, but y- you know, no promises, <laughs> but... no promises. But uh, we'll we'll keep the Doctor Who chatter up. Uh, keep you keep you posted on updates on news and stuff. Look back into the past with miniscopes and commentaries and interviews. Uh, there's one coming this uh, Tuesday with uh, Richard Molesworth about his upcoming John Nathan Turner book uh, on for the Patreon feed. But it's going to be out on the main feed on May the first. Um, so yeah, um, keep, 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 keep tuned to this here podcast feed. If that's what you do, uh, for, for, for this, we appreciate your support and your listenership. There's a quick little mention in the, um, live stream chat. I missed it. Uh, but, uh, uh, Cynthia Grenville, who played Marin in the brain of Morbius also passed away apparently oh. this week. Oh, oh. well, yet another sad note to end this podcast on. Or Sheila, as Doctor, as Tom Baker was trying to remember what her name uh, was uh, in the update. Tom Baker year. Apparently, she died la- November of last year. Oh, November thank last God! Year. Okay. Thank God for that. But still, there we go. Yeah. Sadly, the show is getting older, and the people who made it even older still. So, anyway, on that yeah. uh, depressingly sad note, uh, uh, until yes. next time, uh, I am Stephen in Edmonton, born in Vancouver, and Kristen Edmonton. <laughs> so long for now. You've been listening to Radio Free Scaro. Find us online at RadioFreeScaro.com. Follow us on Twitter and Tumblr at Radio Free Scaro. Subscribe to us on iTunes and donate to the show at Patreon.com forward slash Radio Free Scaro. Thank you.